Hey, this is Mr. Kelly at K-Town. We're talking about factoring and solving polynomials. This is a huge lesson. Takes forever. So I'm going to get started with no fancy music or anything like that. All right, we're going to get down to different ways we can factor. And you already know this way. I mean, this basically should be old hat to you. We're talking about pulling out a GCF. By the way, if I go too fast, like all the different ways to, to factor, there's a, you know, we have the Australian method that Sully taught you. What else do we got? We got what we used to do, whatever the name of that was. You got good old guess and check. You got lots of ways you can factor. If you don't know how to factor, you need to go to, guess where? Chapter 10. And Sully's going to teach you the Australian method, which is money. Um, but seriously, you, there's no way you're passing this unless you can already factor a trinomial. That's my assumption going into this lesson. Enough of that. So we're going to look at the first part here. It's called two-step factoring. That's what I call it. But basically, you pull out a GCF, and whatever's left over, you factor that. So if you remember how to do a GCF, you look at these terms. You say, OK, out of these numbers, what's the greatest common factor? OK, so basically, 3 only has factors of 1 and 3. So potentially, it could only be a 3. You look at all of them, a 3 it is. So we're going to pull out a 3. And then you look, you want to pull as many x's as you can, but it has to be the same number of x's. So when you go through, you have 4 here, you have 3 here, and you have 2 there. So you can pull out 2 from each one. It has to be the same. you got to be fair. All right, so our GCF here is 3x squared. So then you ask, what's left over? It's basically you divide coefficients and you subtract exponents. So 3 divided by 3 is 1, and then 4 minus 2 is 2. Now notice this is going to be a quadratic. That's good. We're going to divide that out. We get minus 13 with 3x's. Minus 2 is 1. And then 108. I think that'll give me 36. We have 2x's. We take 2 out or we divide 2 out. There are none left. So that leaves this trinomial right here. Now, you know how this all works out. We want you to be able to factor trinomials. So after you take the GCF out, make sure that the first term has a 2. It's a squared term. Because if it's not, maybe you didn't take enough x's out. Or maybe, uh, I mean... If you have a coefficient there, double check and make sure that you pulled enough from uh, the GCF. It, I mean, you want to pull the highest number you can. That makes the factoring the easiest possible. All right, so onward and upward. 3x squared, how do we factor this thing? Well, I'm just going to factor. As I said, if you don't know how to factor a trinomial, you need to go to Chapter 10 in Algebra 1. This is going to be what? We could kind of do this in our head. x minus 9, x minus 4 because the negative 9 and negative 4 will give you 36. X and X will give you X squared. And in the middle, you get a negative 9 and a negative 4. They add to 13. But as I said, that's quick. Just go back to chapter 10 if you need to. Let's look at number B. Number B? Letter B? I don't know. So I can pull out a 4X. That's going to leave an X squared minus 9. And that second term, you have to be able to identify that. you got to look at it and recognize it as a difference in perfect squares. So that means the 4X is hanging out. This is really x plus 3, x minus 3, if you remember how to do that, because that's a perfect square, that 9, and it's a difference, which means you're subtracting. So final answer here, 4x times x plus 3, x minus 3. I didn't really box this. I like boxing things in. There you go with that. Okay, so that's basically review. You've done that before with Sully. New stuff, factor by grouping. The way this works, we look at uh, each polynomial in pairs. So the first pair here is the 12x cubed and the 10x cubed. What we're going to hope to do is factor out something and what you're left with will be the same on both and then we can factor that out. You're saying what? All right, let me show you an example. So I'm only looking at the first two here. Out of the first two, should I draw like a dotted line here or something? First two, I get a 2x squared I can take out. It's a GCF just like above. And then what's left over? I get a 6x minus 5. Okay. Um, can I change this a different color for us? I think I can. I'm going to change it to blue. All right. And you're going to be like, why are you doing that? I'll show you why I'm doing that. And the next one, what can we take out of here? Well, I can see a 3 will come out. And this is negative, so you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to pull a negative 3 out. And let's see what's left over when we pull a negative 3 out. We get a positive 6x minus 5. Oh, my goodness. Now you know why I changed the color. Okay, well, if you notice, they're the same. So we're going to do a little trick right now. We're going to pull, I mean, look, you have two terms. You have first term and you have second term. What if it was this? This is a what if, and I'm going to erase this. Don't write this down. Don't write this down. What if it was 2x squared y minus 3y? Could you pull that y out front from both of these? Yeah, you could. 
Now you know why I said don't erase it, because we're not going to do that. But this is like that y. That whole term we can pull out front. So I'm going to pull it out front. We're going to call it 6x minus 5. And then what's left over? Well, the leftover part's the red part. So 2x squared minus 3. And guess what? That is 100% factored. Well, pretty much. If you don't want to go square roots, which we don't. Um, but that's factored by grouping. So you... Look at the first two, you look at the second two, you pull out what you can, and hopefully you have the same thing left over in the parentheses. Now, that's going to be a clue. Like after you pull the first uh, GCF out, whatever you have left over, look for that in the second one and figure out what you need to pull out for a GCF. Let's do the next one right here. So you might ask, like, when do we know? Like, how do we know when to do this? How do we know when to do that? Whenever you have a cubic, you can't first look for a GCF. Always look for a GCF. Are the GCFs here? No. Okay, so it's probably factored by grouping then. So let's try this one. 24 x cubed, 16. I can pull an 8 out of both of those with an x squared. And then what's left over is 3x minus 2. That's what's left over. Now look at the next part. It's a negative 3 and a positive 2. And this is a positive 3 and a negative 2. Guess what? Why don't you pull out a negative 1? Because that will leave negative 3 divided by negative 1 is a positive 3x. And then we'll have a minus 2. Oh my goodness, look right here. You have this term and this term. Let's pull that out of both. So we have a 3x minus 2 in front. What's left over? 8x squared minus 1. And we're done. Ta-da! Now, always check the second one. It, there's a squared in it. So is it a difference of perfect squares? This is no because it's an 8. Now, if that were a 9, you could factor that even further. But that's for another day. Okay, so now it is your turn. You're going to try letters C and D by yourself. Pause the video and try by yourself. Go! i go over this now. If you look with C, what do you have? A 5, I pull a 2R squared out, you're left with 5R plus 3. And then, I mean, here's the key. 5R plus 3, negative 5R, negative 3, that's, that's a hint. you got to pull out a negative 1, and then you can pull that 5R plus 3 out front. Okay, with D, I kind of left it so you can see the same thing. I want you to go through the thought process. I take a 7X squared out, that leaves me a 4X plus 7. Okay, I look right here, I need a 4X, so that means i got to take a negative 4 out. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take a negative 4 out, and that's going to leave me with 4X and a plus 7. And it works out. Hey, how about that? So now I can pull that 4x plus 7 out front, and we're left with 4x plus 7 times 7x squared minus 4. Again, if that 7 were a perfect square, that would go down further like it did up in number 1. Remember our perfect square right there, x squared minus 9? Ah, you remember. All right, so factoring polynomials in quadratic form. I'll tell you what, before we do this one, let's get a visit from our favorite flip mastery meme. Okay, back to quadratic form. That guy makes a good point. Why is your Facebook on right now? Shut that off if you want to learn. Uh, with the first example, I mean, these are quadratic forms. So what that means is they're in the form of a quadratic equation. Quadratic, remember, is a squared that you might be familiar with already. So the first one, I want you to play pretend. I mean, if Bean can do it with his tea party, we can do it with this equation. Let's look at 25x to the fourth. Let's pretend that it's 25x squared instead of x to the fourth minus 49. Could you factor that? Well, that's a difference of perfect squares. Of course, like the, you can perfect squares there. So we got 5x minus 7, 5x plus 7. Well, guess what? It's not x squared, it's x to the fourth, but everything else is the same. So if I change that to the fourth, what times itself will give you the fourth power? It has to be a squared. It's that simple. The inside term will give you a negative 35. On the outside, you get a positive 35 x squared. They cancel, and you still get negative 49. So this one's all done. How simple is that? 5x squared minus 7. It's simple if you know your difference of perfect squares. If you don't know that, then it's not so simple. So 5x squared. Don't forget the squared part. Let's look at b. Oh, look at this. We have an eighth power. That, you know, flag, lights go off, everything. The sirens are going. GCF right here. So we're going to pull out a 2x squared. And we're going to be left with, what do we get here? An x to the 6 plus 5x to the 3rd. That's ugly. Uh, what else we got? Plus 6, regular old 6. All right, can we look at a quadratic equation? Do we have one up here we can look at somewhere? I don't think we do, somewhere. Oh, let's look right here at this quadratic equation. Notice how we go from 2 to 1 to 0 x's. That's a normal quadratic equation. Okay, sometimes the middle term is a 0. Okay, but normally you have a squared term, an x term, and then no x. Okay, now let's double all of these. 
that would give you fourth power, second power, still zero. Okay, that's what we had right down here. Fourth power, second power, but it's a zero. Okay, there's a zero coefficient, and then a one. Okay, back up here. What if we went one more higher? What if we multiplied everything by three, all of the exponents? So we'd have six, three, and then zero. So that's why this is called quadratic form. We have six, three, zero. This is like a quadratic equation, and we can factor it the exact same way. Now, if you can't see this and it's hard for you, then what you do is you write this up here, all right, off to the side. I'm just going to make it a quadratic equation, x squared plus 5x plus 6. How would that factor? All right, well, I need a 6 and a 1 or a 2 and a 3, and we need an x and an x, so I'm going x plus 2, x plus 3. That's how that factors. This factors the same way, except you need two terms to give you an x to the 6. That means they got to be x to the 3rd and x to the 3rd. All right, the 2 and the 3 will still give you um, the positive 6. On the inside, we get a 2x to the 3rd, and on the outside, we get a 3x to the 3rd. 2 and 3 is 5, so it works. So that one's factored all the way. I did do a little check to see if these would factor more. They don't because it's both sum. It's positive. But if there was subtraction, then they might. Okay, let's look at C. Oh, my goodness. C looks like, you know what? I'm looking at C. This doesn't look like a quadratic form because a quadratic equation has three terms. This has four. Guess what? I threw this one in here. Guess what kind it is? Factor by grouping. <laughs> so let's pull out the X. I'm just doing a little review here. You know, we can do that. Uh, what do we got? X squared. I'm going to pull out. See, I just did it. That doesn't make sense. <laughs> I said. Haha, <laughs> is right. X squared. X plus 7. And then I look here. I need an X plus 7. I'm going to pull out a negative 9. That's going to give me an X and a positive 7. So that X plus 7 goes first. And I get X squared minus 9. Uh-oh, guess what? This is one of those that I talked about before, difference of perfect squares. Final answer, x plus 7 times x minus 3, x plus 3. Once again, this is not a quadratic form. I threw that in there just to be funny. Ha, so funny. I know, just keep me on your toes. How about D? We have, once again, a D looks a lot like A. Why don't you pause the video and do D all by yourself? Go. Okay, we're back. Hopefully you tried your best here, but guess what? Did you get this? 4G squared minus 25, 4G squared plus 25? Because this is like 16G squared. That's the quadratic equation that it's like. That's why it's quadratic form. But guess what? We're not done yet because whilst, I never use that word, whilst, what's the difference? Anyways, while this side here, the sum, that can't be factored. This is another difference of perfect squares. So this is going to give you 2g minus 5 and then 2g plus 5. So final answer there. 2g minus 5, 2g plus 5, 4g squared plus 25. Woo, and those are quadratic forms. How fun was that? That was amazing. All right, factoring with cube patterns. Now, Basically, this is a sum. You know what? We need to write this in. Or difference. The sum or difference. The only difference when it's a difference is that we have negatives, right? That's the only difference of differences. But we have, if you want to, if, if you can notice two terms and they're both perfect cubes. So is this something cubed? Is this something cubed? Okay. Then this is basically what it works out to. I mean, honestly, one day some guy like Mr. Bruss sat down and said, ooh, I wonder how I could get a quadratic equation with a binomial here, and if I work it out so that it, you get two perfect cubes, and that's all you get. And this is basically the formula they came up with, so I'm going to show you how it works. We have 64x cubed plus 27. Okay, this is basically the form a cubed plus b cubed, all right? But we want to break it down into a binomial and a trinomial. So how are we going to do that? We need to figure out what a and b are. So in this case, a cubed would be what? Like what number times itself three times, or what term, not even a number? We're going to have to do a 4 with an x. All right, so a cubed is going to be 4x cubed. If you take 4x and you multiply by itself three times, you get 64x cubed. 4 times 4 is 16, times 4 is 64, and x times x times x. All right, how about b cubed? So b cubed would be what number times itself three times gives you 27? That's a 3. So in here, what does this mean? Well, if a cubed is 4x cubed, that means a is 4x. So 
Wherever it says a, we put a 4x. So here we go. So this is 4x plus b. b is 3. All right, then we get 4x squared. Now, I'm going to use parentheses on the first one just so we can see what's going on. Minus 4x times b, which is 3. I'm going to need a little more room, aren't I? We're going to get rid of that. And then plus b squared. So be plus 3 squared. Then it's just simplifying. So 4x plus 3. That doesn't change. 4x squared is 16x squared. Uh, minus 3 times 4, or 12x, plus 9. And we are done with that. Ta-da! Can this factor any more? Pull a 4 out, pull a 4 and a 3, pull just 3 out. No, it cannot, so this is our final answer. That is the sum of two cubes. All right, let me show you how this works with uh, negatives here. Let me make some room. Okay, so we have a cubed here. I noticed that these are two perfect cubes. So a cubed, like what multiplied by itself three times, will give you 8x cubed. That's going to be a 2x. And how about b? All right, so what multiplied by itself three times will give you a negative. We have to think of that as a negative, negative 125. That's going to be a negative 5. Okay, so that's why I said before it's the sum or the difference. Where'd that stuff go? Um, of two cubes. So this is really just this. It's still the sum of two cubes. All right. So now it's off to the formula. So we get a, which in this. Oop, let me put my cubes so we're clear. So a cubed is two x cubed. So that means that a is two x and b is negative five. Sometimes it helps students to actually write that down. A is 2x and B is negative 5. So we're going to write down A, 2x, plus B. So I'm going to write minus 5. You can also write plus negative 5. Uh, equals A squared. I'm going to do that in my head. 4x squared minus AB. So it's minus 2x times negative 5. That's negative 10x. It's minus negative 10x. Maybe it's best just to write all that out. And then plus b squared. So this is negative 5. Negative 5 squared is a positive 25. All right. So the last step, I'm going to simplify a little bit. So we get 2x minus 5 times 4x squared. That's going to be plus 10x plus 25. Ooh, and that is our final answer for that one. So I did one sum and one difference. Remember, I said rewrite differences as a negative b term. Pause the video, you can do C and D, but here's a warning. So first warning, uh, one of these is not a sum of two cubes. One of them is just something else, so you got to figure that out. Second warning, I would look for GCFs in both of them probably. So factor both, go! Okay, did you figure it out? First one is just a regular uh, factor it twice with a GCF, and then it's a difference perfect squares. That's like the very first example we did. I'm putting these in here just so you can start to recognize them. You should always check GCF and then recognize perfect squares. But the second one is, in fact, a sum of two cubes. So we take out a 2B squared. You're left with uh, basically 2B cubed and 7 cubed. And so we plug it all in, and this is what we get right there. So check your answer. All right, last part. Choose the appropriate method. Here, I'm leaving this up to you. So check for GCFs. You've got three different methods you can do. You can pull out a GCF. You can do a quadratic form, or you can factor by grouping. Automatically, if it has four terms, I'm thinking factor by grouping. If I see like 4, 2, 0, I'm thinking quadratic form. And other stuff, get a GCF. Ready? Pause the video and do those four by yourself. Ready? Go. Pause the video. Okay, let's check it. Let's see how you did. Um, first one here, we take out a GCF, and then that just factors. That's a trinomial that factors. 2x minus 7, 4x plus 3. On the inside, you get a negative 28. Outside, you get a positive 6. That'll give you a negative 22x. Next one, if you're looking at this quadratic form here, we have 4, 2, 0. That's just like 2, 1, 0, if you remember. So it's just like n squared minus 4 and minus 60. That's going to give us n squared minus 10 and n squared plus 6. That'll give us a negative 4. Check each of those. They do not factor. Let's move it along. When you go to C, C is cray crazy. Cray cray. If you look at it, you pull out. This is factored by grouping. You get a z to the fourth. Uh, pull that out, you get z minus 3, you get 2z minus 3, so you can pull that out front, and then you're left with a z to the fourth minus 16. That's a difference of perfect squares. That's a quadratic form, 
So that's going to break down into z squared plus 4, z squared minus 4. And then that z squared minus 4 is another difference of perfect squares. So that breaks down again. Final answer, z minus 3, z squared plus 4, z minus 2, z plus 2. That is the craziest one on the whole page. And then lastly, pull out a GCF. And then I have a difference. What do we have? It's a difference, which is really the same as a sum of cubes. That they're perfect cubes. So I noticed that this is basically what you get there for w squared times the quantity two w minus three times the quantity four w squared plus six w plus nine. How are we doing in terms of time? All right, I got about five minutes here to wrap this all up. I don't want a thirty-minute video. Why you make a video of thirty minutes, Mr. Kelly? Uh, so we have four examples now. We're going to use the zero product property. We basically, after we learn how to, why do we factor? It's the reason. Like, why do we factor all this stuff? See all that stuff? A lot of colors. A lot of colors. But we factor so that we can use the zero product property to solve polynomial equations. It helps us solve them if we can factor it because we know, based on the zero product property, that if two things are being multiplied. One of them has to be a zero if it equals zero. A lot of things will subtract and add to zero, but when you multiply, one of them has to be a zero. So that's where that's why we're factoring here. Let's pull GCF out of this one. We get w what minus five. This one's so simple. Equals zero. Now we have two things here in the equals zero. So we just set each one equal to zero and we solve it. It's that simple. You remember doing this. So plus five plus five. We get y equals 5. Over here, we can take square roots, but square root is 0 plus root. That's just 0. We don't, I mean, no, you don't have to show all that. So you get 0 and 5. And we put them in these squiggly little brackets, and that means a solution set. We have a lot of answers to these. So that is the solution set to A. Let's go on to B. Okay, look at how ugly B is. Letter B. I mean, this is an ugly equation, so you should be proud of yourself if you can solve this. Uh, what do we want to do? We want to set everything equal to zero because, look, over here, the zero product property, that kind of implies that it's set equal to zero. That's the only reason we can then set these equal to zero. This is not set equal to zero. So we need to either, you got two choices here. You can move the two terms on the left to the right, or you can move the term on the right to the left. Now, what you want to do is keep the highest term which is this one right here, the term with the highest degree, you probably want to make that positive. Makes your life easier. So we're going to add 6, let's, where are we going to show this? 6x to the 4th to both sides. Now, of course, there are no like terms there, so it's just going to end up being 6x to the 4th minus 20, oh, this is 21, minus 21x to the 3rd plus 15x squared equals 0. All right, so... This is what we have right now. Let's look at a GCF because there are so many numbers here and I see a 4, 3, 2. So I can take out two x's and probably a 3 as well. So 3x squared, that's going to leave 2x squared. And what else we got here? Take out a 3. Minus 7x plus 5. And that will all equal 0. So most of the time, this will factor. If it doesn't, you need to use the quadratic formula to get some ugly answers. But luckily, I think this factors. Let's try some things out. 3x squared times, probably we're going to need a 2x and an x. All right. So 2x and an x. This is a positive 5. The only thing that multiplies a 5 is 5 and 1. But the middle term's negative. So it's got to be a positive. It's got to be a negative 5 and a negative 1. What if we put a negative 1 here and a negative 5 here? What will that do? That'll give us a negative 5 on the inside, and on the outside, we get a negative 2. So 5 and 2, that's what that does it. All right, that factors like that. Now we have three factors. We can set them all equal to 0. So 3x squared can equal 0. Divide by 3, we get x squared equals 0. Guess what? You can square root that if you want to, but x has got to equal 0. There's one answer. Uh, 2x minus 5 has to equal 0. So plus 5 plus 5, we're going to get 2x equals 5, or x equals 5 halves. That's another answer. Last answer, you could get x minus 1 equal to 0, or x is equal to 1. So to make this nice and clean, we put it all in a nice little bracket, and we say x, I usually go in numerical order here from like least to greatest, so that's what I usually do. But it's not necessary. We get 0, 1, and 5 halves. That's the solution set to this ugly equation. Now, if you can if you can solve that all by yourself, you should be proud of yourself because that is an ugly equation. It's massive. That's about as difficult as we get here in uh, Algebra 2. There you go. Why don't you try the last two by yourself? I think you got everything under control. 
give it a shot. Try the last two. Pause the video and do the last two by yourself. Go. Okay, these are so big, bad, and ugly, I can only go over one at a time. So the first one, we have to get that uh, x cubed. Here, look, the fifth power, that's driving the function. We want to keep that positive. So we're going to move that 18x cubed to the other side. So that gives us this. We can factor out a 3x as a GCF. Then we have a quadratic form, very much like x squared minus 6x plus 5. That will factor. All right, so you get 3 I have an extra zero in there. What's going on? That looks like a snowman. All right, there we go. Uh, so basically, the second part here, x squared minus 1, that factors again. Now, you don't have to do that. You can set all three of these equal to 0 if you want. Um, if you do that, what do we get? x equals 0. Here you go plus 5, plus 5, take a square root. Can't forget, when you take a square root of a squared, it's plus or minus. So we're going to get plus or minus square root of 5. And these, if you factored it, just set it equal to 0, you get negative 1 plus 1. Or you could have set this factor right here equal to 0. You add 1, take a square root but it's plus or minus 1. Both ways will work just fine. But your final answer should be for this one. 0, positive and negative, radical 5, and positive and negative 1. And that's the complete solution set for C. All right, let me make some room and we'll do D. Okay, I'll pick up from right here and talk us through the rest of it. So I can pull out, this is factored by grouping, obviously. So the first two, you, I mean, that's obvious. You have four terms here, so it's got to be factored by grouping. So we pull out a d to the fourth, we're left with d squared minus 4, pull out a negative 9, d squared minus 4, pull that out front. So we get d squared minus 4, d to the fourth minus 9, all that's equal to 0. So I factor the d squared minus 4 into d minus 2, d plus 2, that's a difference of perfect squares. So is d to the fourth minus 9, that's a quadratic form, but it's a difference of perfect squares. So we get d squared minus 3, d squared plus 3. All right, so here's where we get a little tricky. So this is going to be easy. We get d minus 2 equals 0, or d equals 2. That's one answer. d plus 2 equals 0, or d equals negative 2. That's easy. d squared minus 3 equals 0. All right, so we can add 3 to both sides. We get d squared equals 3. We can take square roots. So d is going to equal plus or minus radical 3. Okay, there's two more answers. And here's the tricky part. We're going to get d squared plus 3 equals 0. So that means d squared is going to equal negative 3. Uh-oh. So we take square roots, and then uh, we have these wonderful, beautiful i's that we're talking about. Remember how to do that? You pull an i out. So it's plus or minus i radical 3. Final answer. Oh, my goodness. Is this all going to fit? We have positive 2, negative 2. That's why I like doing this. We have a plus or minus radical 3, and then plus or minus an imaginary root, i radical 3. Let me close that bracket. That's ugly. Someone fire Kelly. Somebody fire Kelly. And that's it. That's, that's probably the most difficult lesson we're going to do all year, but there's a lot of stuff, and you have to practice. And that's the only way you can get good at it. You've got to practice. You've got to be able to see when you factor these things, and that only comes with practice. There's no shortcut. So this is Mr. Kelly in K-Town. Good luck to you. Remember, it's nice to be important. More important to be nice. See you.